Hey everyone, welcome to our focus week on veterinary medicine. We have a lot of interesting topics this week. And today I want to talk about um, the corporate corporatization. <laughs> That's a little tricky, uh, of veterinary medicine. And um Basically, I've got some good studies and then some personal opinions about corporate versus private practice. And I know that as pet owners, you are seeing huge differences in how practices are run, uh, definitely seeing differences in what it's costing and you know how much of an effect it's having on your wallet. Um, but this is a really interesting study that came out in um, December in the Journal of American Veterinary Medical Association. And it's a study called Differences in Perceptions and Satisfaction Among Veterinarians Employed at Corporate Versus Privately Owned Veterinary Clinics. And the objective was to compare and contrast the views of benefits and general work conditions of participants working in corporate hospitals compared to those working in privately owned hospitals. Traditionally, veterinary practices have been privately owned and operated by an individual veterinarian or a small group of veterinarians. And certainly for the majority of my career, that's what it was. Um, it, it has shifted dramatically in about the last decade. Um, in recent years, a number of large corporations have purchased and consolidated numerous independently owned veterinary practices, thereby changing the face of veterinary medicine. Not for the better. Uh, corporate involvement in veterinary medicine began in 1987 when Veterinary Centers of America, Inc., VCA, purchased its first independently owned veterinary clinic. Shortly after, Banfield Medical Management International, Inc. entered a partnership with PetSmart and began opening veterinary clinics in PetSmart stores. Mars, Inc. followed, entering the veterinary field in 1994 when it bought Banfield Pet Hospital, then Blue Pearl in 2015, and VCA, Inc. in 2018. So we started out with VCA and Banfield and Mars, and then Mars bought all of them. I'm thinking that that's a problem. Acquisition and consolidation of veterinary practices appeals to large corporations. You'll love this because it offers a safe, lucrative investment for corporations looking to diversify and make a profit. There are now over 60 veterinary consolidators and most CEOs of these consolidators are not veterinarians. They are business people. Approximately 75% of specialty and emergency clinics, and 25% of all first opinion clinics in the U.S. are owned by corporate consolidators. So if you have an emergency or a specialty problem, your pet needs a specialty surgery, you have a problem because 75% of them are corporate. And I think about 60% of them are owned by Mars. Um, and estimates suggest that consolidators control about 50% of all U.S. veterinary hospital revenue. There are approximately 126,000 practicing veterinarians in the U.S., 75,000 work in private practice. These veterinarians are increasingly faced with the decision of whether to work in a corporate-owned or a privately-owned practice. Well, they don't have as much decision-making power as they used to because there's a lot of corporate. One frequently touted positive aspect of working for a corporate-owned practice is the benefits package, including health insurance, paid vacation time, continuing education reimbursement, retirement, and paid sick leave. It has been suggested that consolidation can save money, thereby enabling corporations to offer more and better benefits. Yet the ability of corporations to increase employee benefits has not always translated into a reality, with some veterinary professionals reporting worse benefits after their practice transitioned to corporate ownership. Much has been written about the potential negative aspects of corporate hospitals. These factors include the risk that consolidated hospitals may not be as responsive to employees' opinions when compared to privately owned hospitals, decreased ability of employees to have a role in practice management and animal health care policies. In other words, here's the playbook, play by the rules, 
And this is how you work up and treat any case that presents with symptom X. Um, difficulty in communicating concerns or ideas to upper management. The culture may be less family friendly and offer less flexibility pertaining to working conditions. Yeah, that whole, when we consolidate, uh, we can have more flexible hours and more time off. No, it, it actually doesn't happen. Um, additionally, there may be prolonged approval processes for new equipment or changes in protocol. Another common criticism of corporate hospitals is an overriding focus on making a profit, creating an atmosphere of pressure to increase profit margins. Mm. And who's paying for that? So here's the results of their study. We received 896 responses from associate veterinarians working full-time, of which 32% reported working in private practice and 68% in corporate practice. 50% reported working in a hospital with three or fewer full-time veterinarians, 42% with four to nine full-time veterinarians, and 8% reported working with 10 or more full-time veterinarians. Nearly all reported working in a first opinion or emergency medicine practice. The respondents were 75% female and 22%, um, oh, sorry, 75% female. 22% reported they graduated in 1993 or earlier, 27% 90, from 1994 to 2003, 27% between 2004 and 2013, and 24% between 2014 and 2023. So it was pretty equal quarters. Um, all participants were asked if they were interested in ever becoming an owner or partner, to which 53% said no, 28% said yes, and 19% were unsure. Here's part of our problem. This is why corporate can come in and buy because not very many veterinarians want to be an owner. All right. So the benefits reported to be received most often included a variety of insurances, health, dental, malpractice, short-term disability, long-term disability, and life. A greater proportion of participants working in corporate practices reported receiving eight of the benefits um, than participants working in private practice. These benefits included the following, health insurance, dental insurance, short-term disability, long-term disability, life insurance, mental wellness programs, wellness mobile apps, and uh, veterinary information network membership. There were no differences in satisfaction level for any of the received benefits between those working in corporate practices compared to private practice. We found no differences in the total number of benefits with which participants were very satisfied, satisfied, unsatisfied, or very unsatisfied. Uh, respondents in corporate practice rated their satisfaction level with their benefits as neutral more frequently than those in private practice. So that's great that corporate can offer more benefit packages, except the veterinarians really don't care. That isn't buying happiness. Um, hospital factors. Participants working in private practice reported higher levels of satisfaction than those working in corporate practice for the following several hospital factors. Administration, ability to get new and different drugs, because again, when you work for corporate, they dictate what you, can, what you get and what you can use. Um, ability to acquire new large equipment, time needed to make changes in health-related or workflow protocols, management's acknowledgement of the value of community outreach by staff, and relationship between management and employees. So these are all the reasons why corporate uh, employees were less satisfied. Participants working in private practice reported higher levels of satisfaction than those working in corporate practices for issues pertaining to wages for technicians and nurses, reception and other support staff, and production-based remuneration for veterinarians. And that production-based um, pay is a huge issue. And when we talk about the veterinary shortage and burnout uh, um, on a different day, we'll talk about that some more. Uh, partici participants working in private practice reported higher levels of satisfaction than those working in corporate practice for the following factors, feeling known as an individual by upper management, feeling their voices heard, the ability to fire difficult or abusive clients, the hospital culture, and mentorship. I mean, hard to be mentored when a business person owns your veterinary clinic. Like, you going to go ask them, hey, I have have a hard case I'm dealing with? What are they going to say? Make more money? 
When participants were asked to indicate how much pressure they feel from management related to revenue, work hours, and following specific protocols, those in corporate practices reported feeling more pressure than those in private practice to generate revenue and see more clients per shift. So these are huge problems, huge problems. Now I have another article that says, why are so many veterinary hospitals selling to corporate? Good question. I mean, I know why, but all right. So veterinary practice acquisitions by corporations are higher than ever before. According to veterinary consultant, roughly 25% of pet care facilities have corporate ownership and some corporations own hundreds of practices. Why are veterinarians going corporate? Part of the reason involves the increase in pet ownership after the pandemic. 76% of millennials now own pets and they comprise the largest demographic of new pet owners. Millennials spend a lot of money on their dogs and cats, providing a prime opportunity for vets to make rec record profits, which corporate veterinary practices capitalize on. Veterinary practices are making higher profits than ever before, leading to higher valuations and more offers from corporations. Even before the pandemic, the veterinary business showed an impressive 4 to 5% growth. During the pandemic, the industry grew 8 to 12% a trend that experts predict will last. Almost half of households have at least one pet, and with an increasing number of adults choosing to have fewer or no children, pets are taking their place as part of the nuclear family. When you consider how much money the average family spends on their children, if pet owners spend only a fraction of that, it's still a considerable amount. In addition to spending more on things like obedience classes, doggy daycare, and premium food, millennials don't skip skimp when their beloved pet is sick. According to the North American Pet Health Insurance Association, the number of pet owners that purchase insurance increased by 28% from 2020 to 2021 for a total of 4.4 million policies. When it comes to getting their pets the best medical care available, owners don't cut corners. The veterinary industry has always been resilient to a recession, but the low interest rates, slow but stable economic growth, those have changed a little bit since this was written, and abundance of available capital during the pandemic helped the industry take off and increase corporate buyouts. While certain economic indicators are weakening in the years after the pandemic, the industry remains strong overall. And I can tell you when I wanted to retire and sell my veterinary practices, I had a very attractive offer from a corporate group. Couple problems with that. I would no longer be in charge of decision making and I had to work for that corporation for five years. That stunk. And I wanted to retire now, not after working for somebody for five years. But they put so much money on the table that I actually signed a deal. And then we had a falling out over naturally healthy pets because the corporation thought that I couldn't run Naturally Healthy Pets and the vet clinic, which I'd already been doing for quite a few years. So how was that going to change? And they offered me a pittance for Naturally Healthy Pets and basically wanted to close it down. And I said, no, it's too important. Glad I stuck to my guns. So it fell apart. Lucky for me, my associate stepped up to the plate a few months later and said, I would be interested in buying the practice. And... Frankly, I left a lot of money on the table by not going with corporate and by selling to someone that I knew would keep it as a private practice and serve our clients well. To me, it was worth it. Unfortunately, not everybody can do that. Uh, economics become a huge factor, and I get it. And the problem is... Over 50% of veterinarians have no interest in owning a practice. And when we talk about the veterinary shortage and burnout, we'll talk a little bit more about why they don't want to own a practice. Um, part of it has to do with they have a ton, younger veterinarians have a ton of student debt that they're saddled with for at least 10 or 11 years after they graduate. And they're trying to buy a house and a car and start a family. And they don't want to have a job that is going to require millions of dollars in, in debt and investment and many, many more hours per week working to run everything. So I understand it. It worked out great for me. I hope it's working out great for uh, Dr. Candle, who bought my practice. Um, 
but it's, it's a huge issue. And I don't think that corporate medicine is in the best interest of our pets. I don't think that it is, um, a good way for the profession to be going, but I, I would predict that within a couple of decades, it will be 100% corporate. I don't think we're going to have very many or very close to that. I don't think we're going to have very many private practices. We're being priced out. Um, and I will say that the specialty clinic that I used to take my animals to in Delaware um, when I lived in New Jersey, I loved the specialists there. They always did a great job for me. It got sold to corporate. It is now a blue pearl. And uh, in 2020, I had echocardiograms done on my dogs and the cost was $450. I just called to make appointments for two of our dogs to go up to Delaware to see my cardiologist that I adore. It's $1,100 per dog. In four years, it went from 450 to 1100 Corporate. Not good. Have a great day.